What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sam and I talk about any ideas or advice that I can share with you guys to help optimize your life. So today I wanted to talk about passive income. And if you're on social media or just on the internet, you've probably heard that word flying around. And for good reason. With the pandemic and massive layoffs last year in 2020, people have realized the importance of having multiple streams of income if one suddenly decides to give out. So passive income is where you basically put little to no effort in maintaining that income. However, not all passive income is created equally. And what people don't tell you is that there's actually some upfront work involved. So in today's video, I wanted to share five different ideas for passive income. I'm gonna talk about each of the pros and cons of each one and you know, let you decide which one you would like to choose if you decide that you want to create passive income. So the first way to get passive income, and this is arguably the most passive income that there is that requires little to no upfront work, is dividend investing. So those who are very unfamiliar with the investing world, dividends are what companies reward you for owning a part of their company. So if you go on a brokerage like Fidelity, Robinhood, Webull, or Charles Schwab, you can buy a very small part of a company like Apple. And for owning that stock, Apple gives you a very small portion of their earnings. And literally all the work that you had to do was just swipe up and buy a share. It's that easy. So an obvious pro of dividend investing is that you basically do nothing while you get money while you sleep. And dividends usually pay out on a quarterly, semi-annually, or yearly basis. However, with dividend investing, there are also a few risks that you need to keep in mind. First is that the returns aren't typically huge. The amount of dividends that you receive can vary based on the company, and they can vary from 0.01% all the way to 2 or 3%. So it's really not a lot of money if you decide to invest a hundred dollars. If you get a hundred dollars, you might get zero to two dollars back and you can't really live off of that. Another risk of dividends is that a company can typically take away their dividend if things go south. So let's say there's a bad year and the company didn't do well and they might reduce their dividends. And if you rely on dividends to make a living, then you might be in trouble. I think dividends are still a great way to make very passive income because of the little upfront work that it requires. But I also am investing in growth stocks where I choose stocks that I think will grow over time and make money through the growth of their stock. I'm not super involved in dividend investing at the moment, but I think as I get older, I'll want to be more involved in that. A second example of where you can attain passive income is through Amazon FBA. FBA means fulfillment by Amazon and through Amazon's FBA program, you, an ordinary person, can actually become a seller on Amazon. Every time that you make a purchase on Amazon, there is a seller out there who is making money because they bought that same product in bulk at a lower cost per unit. How the process usually works is you find a product that people are looking for, then you try to look for a supplier who sells that product, typically overseas, and you can do that through Alibaba.com, which is basically a Chinese Amazon for suppliers. Then after you negotiate the number of units that you want to sell and the price for each one, they will ship it over to the United States or they ship it to whatever Amazon FBA warehouse and they handle all of the fulfillment. Hey guys, I'm editing this video right now and I just wanted to make a correction and say that you also have to negotiate shipping terms with your suppliers. Sometimes they'll cover the cost of shipping to the United States. Sometimes you actually have to figure all of that out for yourself. So make sure you communicate properly with your supplier on what the shipping terms are. Now, because Amazon takes care of all the fulfillment, you don't have to worry about managing inventory or about having enough space for all of your products. All you have to do is get the product over to an Amazon FBA warehouse and create the listing. And after you create that listing and have all of the inventory in the warehouse, selling on Amazon eventually becomes pretty passive and you only have to work about maybe a few times a month. However, 
there are also some risks and cons that you need to consider as well. First, Amazon FBA is pretty saturated. If you scroll on any given product, you'll notice that there are tons and tons of different products from different sellers, but may actually just have the same pictures. Trying to find the right product that not a lot of people sell, but still a lot of people are looking for, can be pretty difficult. But that's why there are tools that you can use to find out what kind of products are actually being searched for but don't have a lot of sellers, such as Jungle Scout. And this isn't sponsored, don't worry. Another con is that speaking to your supplier can be pretty interesting because if you're in the United States and your supplier's in China, you are 12 hours apart, so you might end up working at weird hours to communicate with them. There also is some upfront capital required to get Amazon FBA started especially since you are purchasing a few products at the start. I personally have not been successful at Amazon FBA, but there are cases of people making, you know, six figures a month just with Amazon FBA. So I know there's a lot of success there. Number three is print on demand merchandise. As the name suggests, you can create your own custom design and slap it on whatever product you want like a t-shirt or wristband or hat, etc. However, the merchandise is not created up until an order for your product is actually made. So it's actually being printed when there is demand. What's great about print on demand is that it can be cost effective and there is no capital required on your end because the service that you use to print these shirts will have all of it. It helps you save time and it's easy to experiment on different products. Now some cons associated with print on demand is that there can be quality issues. Sometimes not every design on the shirt will come out the same as you would like and you might have to deal with an angry customer. Another con is that you will most likely have to spend money marketing your product because people either just don't see it or they don't know what your design is or what your brand is about. I'm not too familiar with print on demand and I haven't done it personally, but if you're someone who's creative focused and you already have an audience that would want to buy your shirt, then you can definitely do that. Number four is real estate. Real estate investing is probably one of the most tried and true forms of investing that there is. Since probably the dawn of human civilization, people have always fought for land. So when you invest in real estate, you literally own land. I don't know why I think this is so funny. But essentially, this has stood the test of time. And even today, a lot of millionaires think that real estate is probably the best investment that one can make. The pro of real estate investing is that you actually own something that's tangible as opposed to having a stock. Another thing about real estate is that home values tend to be less volatile than a stock would. A stock could drop like 10, 20% in one day, but real estate tends to be a little more resilient to any fluctuations in the market. And if you're lucky, having a property in a right area like having a condo in New York City or in Los Angeles would be great for you because people want to live there and they would most likely be willing to pay a very high price for it. Once you rent out your property to another person, you can simply just collect rent every month and there's your money. Another pro of real estate investing is that there are a lot of ways where you can use the tax code to write off your income, which allows you to pay fewer taxes when you're in real estate. Now the con, however, is that there is a lot of upfront cost. First, you need a down payment, but if you decide to actually renovate or fix up your property, that's also gonna take some time or money. That being said, there's a lot of upfront work that needs to be done in order for real estate investing to actually work in your favor. And while you may put a lot of effort and work and money into something, it doesn't necessarily translate to higher profits. So it's gonna require some level of working hard and working smart. That being said, I really believe in real estate investing and in the future, once I have a down payment, I would like to eventually own a property and just have rental income as one of my streams of 
sustaining myself. Even though it could be a lot of work, I think it could be rewarding to fix up your own place and eventually rent it out to someone. Or you can live in it yourself and you just live with roommates. Now number five is one that I'm working on right now, as you can tell, and that is YouTube. When a user hits 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, they are eligible to be a partner in the YouTube Partner Program. The YouTube Partner Program allows you to put ads on your videos and you make money based on the type of ads that are placed on your videos. The pros about this is every video that you make or have made once you are monetized is eligible to make money for you. So it becomes pretty passive as time goes on. There is pretty much little to no new equipment required to make money on YouTube. Like I'm using an old camera right now and so far I have invested zero dollars into my YouTube channel. The only resource that I've been really using is time. YouTube can also be great for creative expression and there's definitely a lot of potential to make a lot of money if you look at guys like Mr. Beast or David Dobrik or PewDiePie. Now on to the cons. YouTube is very, very saturated. There are hundreds of hours being uploaded every minute or hour, something crazy like that. And content creators are constantly competing for viewers' attention. A lot of people want the lifestyle that YouTubers tend to sell, which is having your own boss, working your own hours, and just posting content about whatever you want, really. But it can be pretty difficult to hit 1,000 subs, and it could take months or even years before you even really blow up as a YouTuber. So while people do make a lot of money on YouTube, there is a pretty large spectrum, and I'd say most people actually don't at all. It's not very passive in the beginning, but it is a test of time and perseverance and how badly you really want it. That being said, you, you know, clearly I am making YouTube videos, so I do believe that there is still opportunity on this channel, but it's definitely a lot more work than I had anticipated, and I definitely suggest that you do your own research before starting a YouTube channel and thinking that you're gonna make six figures a month. So those were five examples of passive income. I hope this video didn't scare anyone because of some of the difficulties and risks that may come with passive income, but I just want to share a, a bit of a more realistic view of what passive income really is. Because sometimes passive income isn't really passive and you actually will have to put in work. A lot of sellers or gurus on YouTube talk about making money really quickly, but if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. But I think with most of the examples that I've made here, the great thing about these examples is that they are scalable. So even if you buy one stock or buy a hundred stocks, whether you buy one product or a hundred products, the amount of work that you need to do to scale your business after the initial upfront work doesn't change too much or it doesn't increase too much. So I hope this video was helpful, you guys. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe. Let me know if there is another stream of passive income that people haven't really talked about or I haven't talked about and you want to share it or maybe you don't want to share it. You know, it's up to you. But until next time, I'm out.